I was going on a fast track to nowhere. Um, I started doing some very poor things, making poor choices, hanging out with some less than reputable people, and I don't, I don't know where I would have ended up if I did not get into this program full of such positive people doing positive things. I would probably say art is the reason I'm passing school. Art, art is the reason I'm in school. Art is the reason I want to go to college. The idea of joining this team who they care about you and they, they want to see you succeed has been so beneficial to me because it's made me realize how important I am and that I need to do something for myself. All academic research says that if you're involved in the arts, that you are going to score better on national exams. And there's a direct correlation to the amount of time you spend studying the arts to how much higher your scores are going to be. Arts education includes the performing arts, dance, and we have theater, as well as music, speech, and debate. And then if we're looking at the visual arts, what you would think of as art classes, sculpture and photography, drawing and painting. But it also includes the digital arts, so that would be multimedia, audio, video, animation, graphic design. And then as, as an arts industry across the state of Nebraska, we're starting to include things like architecture, the culinary arts, landscape architecture. So as those things uh, appear in public schools, whether it's for a magnet school or just part of regular curriculum, I would include those as a part of arts education as well. Art education is important for every student in this state. If we are truly to get everything from every human being in this state, we have to provide them with a background uh, in math, science, history, reading, writing, and the arts has to be the doorway to that to help students who might not ordinarily see their gifts see them. Music is the big connector. You know, music is science, music is history, music is language, music is math. It brings all of those things together and it unifies all the experiences that they have in school. So uh, to me, it's, it, it's the heart, it's the pulse, it's the most important thing to us as people. Everyone is a shining star here because music is for everyone. I had one girl one time that said, oh, Mrs. Luku, I miss your music class so much. No matter how I was feeling, I always left happy. And I don't want to just make them happy, but I do want them to know that music can make them happy, and they can always turn to that. When kindergartners enter my room, uh, it's unleashing a power. To watch them grow and develop over the six years that I have them is amazing. And, and teaching, especially in art education, is all about that building and growing. So when my fifth graders leave, I feel like the one thing that I, I want them to go away with is the confidence to know that they can tackle problems, that they can look at a problem in lots of different ways, multiple perspectives, they can come up with more than one solution. In fact, I often share with them, you're going to use what I teach you more than just making a piece of artwork or visiting a museum. When you're ready to buy a car, when you're ready to pick a college or what you're going to study, when you're going to buy a house, even the mate that you're eventually going to choose, you have to go through the creative process and think through all of those different possibilities of what it is that you can choose from. My hope always is that children will appreciate art, they will have it in their life somehow, but the bigger picture to me is that they take away the problem-solving, uh, critical thinking, and looking at the, at the world in more than just one way. 
and Dancing Classroom strives to teach social development through the art of ballroom dance. You start out in Dancing Classrooms just getting students to touch. This is a big deal for fifth grade and seventh grade students just to be able to have that positive human contact. And when you're looking at some of the students that Dancing Classrooms would work with in schools that have high poverty, um, and high mobility rates and uh, a lot of the side effects of high poverty. You didn't know if in that day, that 45 minute dancing classrooms class might be the only time they have positive human touch all day long. So getting a child to go from not even wanting to look at the person across from them, their partner, to within just a couple of lessons, being able to go to a respectful dance posture in a nice dance frame and um, look their partner in the eye and engage in some small talk. May I have this dance, please? Yes, with pleasure. You know, right there, what you've accomplished. I, I can't even talk about it. Louder Than a Bomb is a statewide poetry competition where high schools can send um, teams of students to compete. Kids have three minutes and ten seconds to do an original piece of work that they have to uh, perform and get a score on from zero to ten. There's some judges, they're picked randomly from the audience, but they can't be anyone's mom. What makes slam poetry important in high schools is that it is an amazing channel for energy, for emotion, for attitude, all these things that I think high school students are dealing with or trying to deal with on a daily basis and told to stifle it. Here it's, you know, hey, let's hear what you have to say. Hey, let's hear what makes you angry. Hey, let's hear what makes you amazed. And it is uh, an opportunity for them to process it themselves and then broadcast it also. For a slam poet, um, the speech just can't be good. Like, it, it could be good, I mean, it could be good, but someone has to connect with it. You got people out there with scorecards, and they're holding up, you know, zero to 10, and they know not, they're not diving experts. They don't know what they're looking for, right? They know how they feel. So the challenge in slam poetry is how do I get this whole room full of people and these five people with scorecards to feel something that they're like, wow. Students have a, a, an incredible awakening when they discover theater. And to have a student who knows very little about theater, but then finds it, and you see the light bulb go off, you see the spark happen. Uh, I've seen it change lives in, in so many ways. And I think that what it allows us to do as teachers is take what we're doing in the classroom and give a different venue, give a different medium through which kids can express their intelligences, can express themselves, can become writers, thinkers, and it just, it just breaks down a lot of the barriers that, that kids come in conflict with in a standard classroom. And, and what's great about theater too is that it's not relegated to the stage or the limelight. Students flourish in light boxes, they flourish in sound, sound booths, they flourish backstage, they flourish in technical rooms where their talents are put to the test. I often say that every student ought to have a chance to uh, discover a talent they have while they're in high school, set a goal, have somebody stretch the vision of what, what they can do, and to work hard and to know they've worked hard and to know they've experienced some kind of uh, excellence in that area, and then to celebrate it. I think one of the things that we need to impress on both education professionals and on parents is the role that arts education can play in the full development of a child. If you're familiar with the Search Institute, they have over 20 years of research that shows that when students develop these 40 developmental assets that they've identified, that they are more likely to become successful, productive adults, less likely to engage in risky behavior, more likely to graduate from high school, have higher GPAs, uh, more likely to go to college. And the arts can support 
over half of these 40 developmental assets. A lot of times um, we think that we only need that, that math, but the math is not enough unless you have something that you can do with it, that you can create with it. Artists like Michelangelo and like Leonardo da Vinci, like they weren't just artists. Like they were more than artists. They were people that were interested in anatomy and in science and in all these things. And like researching and knowing about people like that helped me to apply things that I wouldn't otherwise have understood or wanted to understand. And it's really benefited me in school and taught me that I need to focus and how to learn and how to remember things and it's really helped me organizing myself too. All of my classes have helped me, even math has helped me and there was a time when I didn't really understand math and I didn't see how it applied to my work and it's like now I even see how math applies because it's like geometry and trigonometry, all these things apply to shapes and colors and it's like if you understand like classes like that then you can understand your work better and it's just helpful. What I love about theater is the fact that it synthesizes all learning into one process. Uh, if I have students who love math, we use math in, in, in a lot of ways. Science is used. Looking at the world in all of the ways through the arts and looking at all of the disciplines through that lens of the arts makes, makes students open their brains <laughs> to so much more than what they ever would have dreamed they would have wanted to, even wanted to. So many of them say, this is the doorway that I went through that helped me realize why my algebra class was so important to me. And so um, arts are a doorway to all other academic studying. I wouldn't have a high school experience. I'd come to school and I'd leave. I did that my freshman year. I, I, have, I had a sister who sat with me at lunch sometimes and, um, and I'd get through the day. I just would try to get through the day. I'd go through classes and I'd try to learn and um, it was just, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, high school was high school, you know? You didn't really look forward to it. If students are involved in the arts, they will stay in school because in that arts program, they find a community that teaches them what family is all about. That community or that family accepts and finds a gift that that student brings to the community. So because of that, students feel valued and they become part of that community and they stay in school. Some students uh, both find engagement and express themselves through the arts. They may have been struggling as they go through school, not connecting anywhere to anyone. Slam poetry has changed my life. <laughs> it was so amazing that you know there was just this place in high school where you could where you could say what you want and where you could be yourself and not get judged and knowing that I am talented and bullies are going to are going to have some debate about that but I'm okay with that cuz I know I'm talented so being able to show my talents now that I have the courage to because of slam poetry it just it makes everything like shiny. It offers a, a human being the opportunity to explore um, the information that's inside of them and in a way that somebody can't make a check mark on it. So if you put a student in front of a uh, canvas and an easel, you might be able to change their technique and say, try this kind of stroke, take a look at this color you're using, you can add this to it. But you don't say to that student who's putting themselves on the canvas, this is wrong, this is not right. 
so many of those things that a student could experience in a math class where the problem has a formula and it has an answer. In the arts, there are many roads that lead to greatness and not necessarily a right and a wrong. What mattered the most to me is having people around that were like, yes, to what I was doing. You know, yes, yes, do more of that. Um, and I think, you know, that's the best thing I can do for them is be in the room when they're making these poems and hear the poems. And, and yes, I, I give them critiques and suggestions, but what I'm mostly saying is, yes, do more of that. Do more, be more of you. Keep doing that. That's what you need to do. If you ask my coach, it would literally take coach a half an hour of come on, you can do it, like just trying to coax me out of my shell, just to speak one poem, not even perform it, just to speak it. It slowly took less time, and once I realized how they're not gonna judge me, and they're gonna be supportive, and they're gonna be like, oh my God, that one line, and just being a part of that, you've changed. You can't stay the same, and you can't, surround yourself with awesomeness and not become it. Children come to the art room knowing there's no one right answer. Certainly teachers, it's their job to develop and uh, create units that have criteria, things children need to follow in order to be able to learn from those. But in general, children come in with the knowledge that I get to come in and make my own solutions. Anybody who is a teenager or who has been a teenager looks at those years and you realize the emotional turmoil, instability, insanity that is really going on inside of, of students. And things like the arts are an outlet um, of putting things into some kind of perspective. When I was a freshman, I had a lot of I had a lot of personal issues, like a lot of I, I I couldn't accept myself for who I was, and think that because of theater, I was able to accept who I was, accept who other people were, become more self-aware, and I have become more aware of my surroundings. Well, I mean, kids are no different than adults, right? I mean, they think about and obsess over and, and try to figure out their lives every day, just like we do. Um, but I think what slam poetry does is it kind of, or, or working on a slam poem that's deeply personal does, is it, it makes it slow, it slows that process down and it sort of asks you to be more reflective about the process. And, you know, I've watched uh, poems go from, you know, angry rants uh, towards someone and down to the stage of forgiveness and watch those poems sort of blend blend together for for, the, for one of the kids you know so that that process um, I think makes makes working through something really visible to yourself it, it like grounds you in a lot of ways because it's like expressing yourself it's like if you get that on a piece of paper if you get it out on a canvas it's like it's like seeing yourself it's like you can see yourself there and if you can see yourself then you can do something about who you are so I think expression is very important very important <laughs> HDR is a design firm first. We design things for people. We design buildings, we design spaces, we design materials and objects that reside within those spaces. So every person that works for us has to have an understanding, at least a basic understanding, of what design is all about in order for them to be able to understand the overall kind of vision of the practice first and foremost, and then on a more intimate level, to understand the task that they have at hand. It could be producing a document to help us win work. Um, it might be something just setting font, uh, as simple as that. Or it may be a grand gesture of an architect who's envisioning a building that's going to set and change the landscape of a city uh, that that building is going to set in. Business people are saying to us, I can teach them the technical piece of what it is that they need to know. I want people that can come in and look at a problem, not look at parameters or worry about parameters and go beyond that and really look at lots and lots of solutions and uh, without art education of any type we're not developing that in children. In order for us to really be the most respected and revered country in the world we have to maintain one thing and that's our ability to innovate better than anybody else and I think that arts fundamentally will enable us to do that maybe better than anything else. 
We're about problem solving. We're about the 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, critical thinking. All those pieces are incorporated into the art room. So we're at the table. We're with those other curriculum areas and, and we're being valued even more so. I think because of No Child Left Behind and because of the economy that arts education has lost ground as far as every child having the opportunity to experience a variety of arts in their education. I think there's a lot of pressure being put on students to perform in some of the core curriculum classes like reading and math uh, for schools to be able to basically uh, show their viability um, and art classes and music classes unfortunately are something that really are not a very good metric for measuring the success you know um, in things like reading and math so I think that some of that has forced us into a situation where um, those are being a bit forgotten as compared to when maybe I was a child. I can tell you that time is what you will hear from every teacher, particularly elementary school teachers, when you ask them what they need more of. And because um, our assessments, which are required by the federal government, don't test the arts, nor do I think they should, they are not given the priority time that those core subjects, which our assessments are based on, are given. There's only so much time in the day, and uh, reading and math take up a lot of that time. With testing and uh, the lack of money and people who are doing the arts who might not be trained to doing, doing the arts, I think the experiences that students would have had the opportunity for in the past are becoming maybe fewer and fewer. Uh, students might be able to find them outside of the classroom and extracurricular activities, but to actually have that experience of learning about arts in a very academic way, the same way that you would learn about math, science, uh, history, uh, reading, those sorts of things are becoming fewer and fewer. And I think that's probably to the detriment of the success students will have in math, science, history, social studies, because um, when you look at the arts, the arts sort of serve as the foundation for making those things come to life. And I have believed that um, since I was a child in the arts and I was exposed to it, because you sort of sit back and look at things and arts gives you that lens to see the world and to do something with the information that you've been given. Well, first of all, the average citizen needs to be involved in education. The, the whole range of education to make sure education is being funded so that students have opportunities in all the areas of academia. They have to be that involved. Um, they can't say, well, I no longer have children in school, so I'm, not, I'm no longer interested. It doesn't affect me because education affects us all. We either pay up front or we pay at the end because education makes sure that people have places to go and things to do and dreams to dream. I think a basic fundamental need and gesture from the business community to show a support in the arts is to start programs and support programs that give a better understanding to what the arts are all about. I think that there's opportunities for students from anywhere uh, to be able to take their careers in places that they never thought they would have because there's much more accessibility to the arts now maybe than there were a generation or two ago. And I think that the corporate environment has an opportunity to help with that. And I would say that uh, a great opportunity as a matter of fact. What anybody could do to support 
the arts, to support Louder Than a Bomb, to support uh, you know, painters, musicians. You know, pick a night every month. Go out and see something. Um, do something different. Don't sit home watching TV. Go to the Poetry Slam. Go to the art opening. Go to the recital. Especially ones with young people. It's, it's a matter of uh, putting your butts in seats and encouraging people by your applause, by your comments. Try not to talk to kids about A, B, and C is not gonna make any money, you know? I just, I see people say that to kids all the time, like, oh yeah, poetry, well that's not gonna make you any money, or, you know, whatever that is. I mean, I'm a poet, I'm a, I'm a professor at a, at a large research one institution, I, I'm okay, you know, like, and that's what I did. My whole, I played softball and I wrote poems, that's what I did, and my parents said yes to that at every, at every turn, and yes, my parents knew that poets don't make a lot of money, but I think the best thing we could do is when, when, when kids are interested in something like that, when they're interested in making video games or making poems or, you know, uh, painting or whatever it is, that that's gonna, they're gonna be, if they love that, they're gonna make it a value. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you they're gonna make it a value. The arts are a way for students to become. And I use that word, they're, they're, they're often born there, and then they become, and they become a thousand other things uh, through the arts. And they use them to do that, as stepping stones to become who they are and what they want to be. I think the most important person who needed to hear me was me, ice cream. I'm spectacular because I have people who love me. I'm spectacular because in the midst of all darkness, I will stand with my head held high and I will look whoever I need to in the eye. So I could stand up here with a crowd of I don't know of how many and say it and mean it. I'm spectacular. Do you hear me? So if I wrote a book today, it'd be infinity in one pages, the last page to remind you and anybody else who dares to listen, but most importantly myself, that I am spectacular.